What's up all Power Ass Crew? Today, 2005 Road King, we're doing brakes. We're going to show you guys how to change out the front brakes. They're super easy. So it should be a quick, simple video, but for those, for those of you who don't know how to change brakes, it's going to be very helpful. If this is the first time you guys land on Power Ass YouTube channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that bell notification button so you don't miss a thing. Let's get on with this thing now. To keep from making the video crazy long, I'm just going to show you how to do one side of the front because both sides are the same, exact same part number of the brake pads and everything. So right here, right here is a 10 millimeter 12 point socket. 10 millimeter 12 point. Okay, so you can get that off and get that one off. So once you get the last bolt loose, when you pull it out, look at that, it slides right down. And bring it off like that. Now have a bit of a duh moment. Put the copper back in place and simply stuck these bolts right here in for just a couple of threads because I forgot to loosen these bolts up. What these right here do, they go with through the copper and hold the uh, brake pads in place. Keep from sliding out of the copper. I used a quarter inch 12 point on these. You really should find the, the proper metric, but we didn't have anything here. So the quarter inch 12 point work, but just it's a loose fit. So don't get, if you have to really put pressure on to break them loose, don't do that. Go find the proper size metric. But these are, I came release pretty easy, easily. But as you see, I pull them out. It's just a pin that holds the uh, brake pads in place. But for right now, I mean, I've got them broken loose, obviously all the way out. But I'm going to stick them back in there for right now. So whenever I pull the caliper off, it's going to bring the pads down with it. Okay, you get a short bolt goes on bottom. And this is a long bolt up top. You see when I pull the long bolt, boom, it slides right down. Grab the caliper, bring it back, bring it back toward the fender a little bit. You may have to rock it around a little bit, and there you go. Then we take these, pull them out. Anyway, you get the point. Uh, I, think I, got I think I got him. I got it. Maybe. I'm doing this with one hand. Work with me. On your master cylinder here, you want to take a four-way screwdriver, loosen those up, take that cap off right there. Because whenever you press your caliper or you press your pistons in, the fluid's going to rise back up in the master cylinder. So this being a sealed system, you want to take these screws right here out up to allow the air to bend. And it's much easier to push those uh, pistons in. Now as you can see, the fluid's lower here. That's because the pistons have came in, allowing the fluid to drop inside there. And then notice also on the cap, this is a gasket that goes around it. But you see this right here, how it balloons? That takes up some of the airspace inside the master cylinder as your fluid gets lower. So whenever you get ready to put it back together, you just simply take your finger and reshape it. Like that right there, and you're good to go. Be sure to use DOT 4 brake fluid on these Harleys. Get your pair of channel locks, get up inside there like that right there, and you slowly squeeze the pistons back in. And I say slowly for a very good reason. Okay, if you squeeze it really fast, your master cylinder will shoot fluid way on up there, and you'll be drowned in fluid. Well, not literally, but you know what I'm saying. Squeeze slowly. And then your pistons are pushed in. Let's check our master cylinder. You can see our fluid is a little higher than it was. We still need a little bit topped off, which we have the proper fluid for it. So that's okay. So we also got to do the one on the other side. But like I said, this side right here, exact same procedure as that side. So there's really not much need showing you what's going on over there. You want to show them on the last cylinder? Mm -hmm. Go for it. Okay. okay. Now you see right there when he squeezed the caliper, how it's shooting the fluid up. See, that's why you squeeze it slow. 
because it looks like a little volcano shooting up out of there. Yeah, you got. We had a geyser. I wouldn't have done that for anybody but you. <laughs> <laughs> And again, proper example why you do it slow. Now one little trick you can do is just take your simple shop rag, paper towel, whatever is left top of the master cylinder like that. Just so in the event you squeeze it too fast. You've seen how it erupted up like that. That way the shop rag or whatever will catch it and prevent it from going all over the place. Now the pads we're installing came from JMP Cycles, which we use these, uh, use these guys quite a bit for my bike and his both. Part number 177239, twin power, organic brake, so on, so on, so on. Anyway, now bear in mind if you buy them from the Harley Davidson, now bear in mind if you buy them from Harley Davidson, they're about 60 bucks a set for one set of brake, uh, brake pads. 60 bucks for all three of these. Take your pick. We're going to be applying uh, anti squeak or anti squeal, what do you want to call this stuff? Disc brake quiet. Now this stuff right here is like some of my favorite stuff to use when doing any type of brakes, be it motorcycles, cars, jeeps, whatever the case may be. This stuff is the bomb. But look right here. See where the rings are right here? That is where the pistons were pushing on the pads. So put you a little bit of this right here, about the same perimeter around here that would be for each one of the pistons. Do that on both sets of pads. This pad and the other one. Left and right, whatever it is. Yeah, that's it. Okay, but whenever you pull your old pads out, Keep your pads to each side of the bike because something just kind of caught us off guard. This has got the tips here. This has got a fat block here and rounded here. So they are definitely dependent on which side of the caliper they go on. So assuming that, okay, this side right here that had the tips was going to go on the back side of the caliper like this because it fits perfect. And then the one with the rounded edge here went to the front side of the caliper because you got your hard ace assembly here that that's where they're going to go. No such luck. The other side was actually the other way around. And we sit and fumbled with it until we finally figured out what the heck was going on. And with this pad right here for your right side of your bike, this rounded pad is going to go to this side of your caliper versus on the other side, it turned out to be the other way around. So long story short, when you pull out your pads, Pay attention to which side comes from where, which side's outside, inside, left, right, so on, so on. Uh, whenever you say for instance on the right side, when I pull out the old pad, I see this is curved. It's on the Harley Davidson simple side here. I will mark this to say this is where that came from. So on with that one, and so on with the, on the left side of the bike. So that will make things a lot easier for you because that just caught us off guard because we couldn't get the pad score on that caliper over there. I'm stuck. Mine popped right in, no problem. And I was test fitting them before I put the slime on there. And so it caught us off guard. Therefore, we figured it out. So I just want to give you guys a little heads up. Mark your pads where they come from as you pull them out if you've never done this before. Show you guys a quick little trick. After you get this one side, just put one bolt in right here. See, I've only got one bolt in right now. It's going to use this side right here as a pivot point. You take your pads, place your thumb on both your pads, push down, and your bolt slides right in. So using that as a fulcrum of a lever, like a lever, Push that down, bolt pops right in, tighten these up, then put your uh, slide your pads out in the proper position, we'll slide them over the disc. So I'm going to get these tightened up, and we'll be back with you in a moment. Okay, these are not tightened up, I just got them thread started. I took my flat screwdriver to make sure my pads were in the proper placement. Take your caliper, tuck it in between your fender, you have to tilt it just a little bit. And what you want to watch is where the brake pads line up with the disc. And rock it a little bit. Look at that. She falls right in place. Long boat goes up top. Short boat on bottom. Once you get that tightened up, slowly pull your lever. And I say slowly because watch right here. I didn't do it that time. Because what you're doing as you squeeze the lever, you're, you're putting your brake pads back in place. There we go. Kind of like on a car, you, you keep doing it until you get pedal. Well, now I got a lever. 
See right there, I got solid good levers. Now our brake pads are sitting back in place. Always do this for one before you top off your master cylinder. Two for darn sure before you take off and ride. Squeeze that lever until you feel because right here's far as I can I mean I can squeeze it harder but right there I would probably be locking the uh, front tire up at this point but with the first time you squeeze as you see when I first started I was bringing it all the way into the grip that's because your brake pads are not touching the rotor any longer so as you squeeze it each time you squeeze this you're pushing your pistons closer and closer and closer and it's squeezing the brake pad closer to the rotor so now that I got solid brakes right here we can top it off with some dot four fluid Before we put the cap back on, I was going to show you guys real quick. Don't fill it all the way to the top. Because as soon as you do, and you put your cap back on, you see that rubber gasket right here. Where it's going to protrude down inside the fluid. If you fill it up to the top, like some people think you have to do, and if you drop your cap back in, it's going to pour fluid all over your bike. So, we've got probably about three-eighths of an inch down from the edge. And she's good to go. So, put your cap back on, tighten your screws up, and you're good to go. If you enjoyed that video, hit me with a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, there's cool comments down below. And like I said, take note, whenever you take your brake pads out of the calipers, note the position of each individual pad. Left side, right side, or inside, outside of the right side, inside, outside of the left side. Take note of that because you'll have to put your old ones back in the same direction as it kind of caught us off guard because we figured each caliper on each side was going to be the same way. That wasn't the truth. So again... If you have to get you some kind of Sharpie tape, something, as you pull each pad out, do inside, right side, outside, right side, and so on, so on, on the left side. Uh, make sure your brake fluid is topped off once you get done. Please be sure to squeeze that lever until you feel brakes engaging on that lever. Because what catches a lot of people off guard, especially in cars when we do brake jobs, is that they'll... Um, go take off and they'll hit their brakes and they'll freak out because they got no brakes. Well, that's because the uh, the uh, pistons in the caliper hasn't receded to its proper to its depth yet to where it's contacting the rotor. Squeeze that lever until you got brakes like I showed you guys a moment ago. Cool? Sweet. Alright everyone, if you enjoyed this video, thumbs up if you, if you like it. Subscribe if you haven't. Leave me some cool comments down below. Peace out. Later y'all.